Hello out there in YouTube land. Kevin here with a one puff review. And uh, I just felt like trying something different, meaning something from the cellar that I haven't had before. Uh, I often feel this way on rainy days. I don't know why, I just do. Today is not really raining, uh, but yesterday was a typhoon. Uh, I don't know. That affects my mood for, for whatever reason. Up today is Robert McConnell, the original Red Virginia. Now, uh, I have had this. Actually, I distinctly remember I bought this when I um, started this job. That was in 2010. I didn't buy it to age. I just never opened it. And I don't... Well, I think the tin description might explain this. Uh, the tin description goes... Size that up a bit. One of the original blends from 1848. Rich chestnut colored leaf from Carolina combined with Virginia bright tobaccos to produce a mild but satisfying blend. A touch of perique gives a taste of elegance and quality. No Latakia is added. Now, if that were the whole tin description, there's no reason why I didn't open it before, but I think this is why I never did. So I always I look at the tin description, I always look online at the tin description before I open something, uh, even before I start doing these, these reviews. And it says, notes, flavor, flavoring according to K&K &K website, chocolate. Now, that seems to be more of a top note from what I read in the reviews, but... Um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big aromatic person, and this may not be strictly speaking aromatic, but it does have flavoring added to it. Um, and what that means is I can't just put it in any pipe. Uh, and my favorite pipes are, uh, they don't, because I don't usually smoke aromatics, they don't have aromatics in them, so I tend not to put... So if I have something like this, it's not going in one of my favorite pipes, and that's probably the reason why I just never opened this one. Um, so it is going in this, which well, actually is a very nice pipe. It's an Escorty. I'm sure there's a box opening for this one. Uh, not quite a church warden, but it is a bit on the extended side. And fits very comfortably in the mouth because it rests on the chin. Um, this is a pipe that you know, a couple years ago, before I went to New Zealand, I was smoking... Uh, was that the Celt Celtic Cherry? Is that the right, the right one? The right name? It is. Hang on, it's right here. Happy Tin. Uh, okay, it looks like Celtic Sticker. Um, Simon Gawith. And the sticker's not going to come off without taking off the thing, but I think it's Celtic Cherry. I mean, definitely it has cherry. No, it's not. It's Celtic. Something ending with M A N. That's all I can get. Celtic Talisman. That's what it is. Uh, but it does have a cherry top note. Uh, and I found it was a good tobacco for smoking around other people. Um, and it just always went in 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 this pipe. So it could be a little bit ghosty. Um, but that's where it's going. Um, so let me open this baby up. No, this one. I know I say this every time, but I've had this pipe tool on my pipe chain probably since I bought my first GMAC car, which was in 1988. Um, so you're looking at, and then the car is long gone. Um, but you are looking at um, a very old pipe tool probably older than 88. So I had an interesting experience. Um, Dorisco mixture. I'm some sidebar here, okay? Uh, Dorisco mixture um, by Fox. I, I didn't do a video because I'm pretty sure I have smoked it before. Although I'm not 100% sure I have. Um, I've certainly smoked other Foxes and I like, I like their Banker's mixture quite a bit. Um, damn. So what happened was I opened it, and you know the the top paper uh, was not present. Not only that, there were a couple of bowls missing. Like right? right in the center was kind of concave, where you would you know where if you were grabbing tobacco, you get out of the center, and there was there were definitely several bowls missing. Um, but it was it was factory sealed. 
So I contacted the, um, there we go. So I contacted Fox. I said, look, I'm not complaining. I just, you know, I bought, I, if I, if I had just bought it, I would have c complained to the store. But I, again, it's a good five years ago that I bought it. Um, so I contacted Fox. I said, look, I'm not complaining. I'm just letting you know there's this problem. And they looked into it. They, you know, they got some photographs of the tin for me. And basically it said, they said, we don't know what happened because we've had some complaints, occasional complaints about you know not being sealed properly and drying out. We've never had this complaint before. So I'm going to dismiss that as just some kind of quirk. It happens, right? Um, I mean, 95% of the bowl was still there, of the, of the tin was still there, so... Um, so I guess there's a there's an argument why you should open your tins right away. But um, anyway, uh, Drisco mixture is actually pretty nice. So mostly uh, Virginia. That one was Perique. I think I think should know that. I smoked some this morning. Uh, yes, I did. Okay, so let me get some of this straight. I go. I'll, I'll get the rest of it later. But okay, so look. Yeah, there's a slight bit of chocolate in there. But it's, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I mean, if you do like this, you get chocolate. If you do this, yeah, you definitely get chocolate. Um, looks like that. Don't want to tilt it too much for obvious reasons. But let's, um, not like anything else. Yeah, you get, there's definitely some, some Virginias in there, as the description says. I don't actually smell the uh, Carolina, uh, nor the Perique. No, I do get the freak. If I think about it, I get the freak. Okay, I think this is going to be uh, a little more. It's it's it does seem to be a top note, but it does seem to be a little bit more than I would usually like. Uh, but again, it may be a good one for smoking around other people, and that's always a good thing to have. I also love this pipe. I, I actually kind of wish that I didn't uh, ghost it with um, the Celtic Talisman. Uh, and I do have a retort. I could I could give it a proper cleaning, but maybe one day I will. Uh, but I think right now it's just psychologically in my mind as a uh, aromatic or at least top noted tobacco keys back. Funny in Korea, if you like this many keys, people are like. Oh my god, you have so many keys! Um, I think in America there's nothing unusual about that. Um, but I do have two houses. I only, I only own one of them. Uh, an office, two cars, my wife and mine. You know, there, there are a lot of twos in there. Um, actually, I remember growing up, it used to be kind of like uh, one person I know said it was it was like a success. You know, you can tell how successful a man is by how many keys he has. And while I'm not sure that I necessarily agree with that, it has certainly um, um, filtered into my way of thinking at times. Okay. A pre light, and I gave this a good cleaning. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm just getting general aromatic. I'm not actually getting chocolate or cherry. Which reminds me, the first, the first pipe tobacco I ever bought that didn't come from Walgreens, you know, the U.S. Um, drugstore. And this is back in the 80s. Was a uh, Tinderbox. I uh, saw so my mom told me, well, why don't you go to Tinderbox? I'm like, Tinderbox, what's that? I'm like, hey, it's in the mall, it's a pipe store. I'm like, I just ran, ran there right away. Um, was uh, It was called Chocolate Covered Cherry. So, that would be perfect in this pipe right now. Um, so, I, I definitely used to smoke aromatics uh, before I got into. Delicious. Anyway, let's light this up, shall we? Okay, I get chocolate, but it is a top note. It's actually more prominent when I smell the tobacco directly than when I taste it, based on literally one puff. So yeah, um, I think my problem with 
hardcore aromatics like say chocolate covered cherry is that you taste chocolate and you taste cherry you don't really taste the tobacco uh, at least here you do, you do get the tobacco so what they the tobacco is what they put in here uh, would make a good blend by themselves they don't I think it doesn't need the chocolate and I, I would if I didn't have the chocolate but since it does I will review what it is and not what I want it to be Yeah, it kind of alternates between tobacco and chocolate. Certainly if I focus on the chocolate, I can get the chocolate. And if I focus on the tobacco, I get the tobacco. Um, I think the chocolate does kind of obscure, I, and I'm not sure, I, okay, if I didn't know what was in here, if there was no tin description, but I just knew it had chocolate, I think I would have a hard time saying what kinds of tobacco are in here. Uh, I would probably get Virginia for sure. I get the preak when I'm actually looking for it. No, yeah, it, it's the preak is definitely coming through now. I would love to get the room note of this. I wish somebody here else here was smoking this. I, I do love the room note of aromatics. That's never changed. Okay, this is actually pretty good. Um, like I said, not one of my usual tobaccos. It, I don't think it ever will be. But, uh, so I finally opened... Where did I put my tin? I finally opened a tin. This has at least 10 years on it. Um... I mean, it's almost 10 years that I've had. I'll say it's been 9 years, but, you know, I'm sure it didn't go straight from the factory into my hands, so it must have been sitting in the store for a while. And just, you know, I don't think it's like one of the most popular blends out there. I'm not criticizing it, but I don't think it is. So I'm sure it was probably sitting in the store for a few years before, well, maybe a few years before it got to me. I mean, uh, we can safely say that it's 10 years on it. It's, t it's been 10 years plus in the tin. Um, yeah. It's not bad, actually. Um, like I said, definitely more of a crowd pleaser than a cabin pleaser, but uh, it's good to have these kind of tobaccos. I don't have any any such tobaccos. Oh, well, I have a Christmas blend that I didn't like. Um, yeah, I have, I have some crowd pleasers that I don't like that I could dip into, but I think now I have a crowd pleaser that I do like, so I'm going to pretty much save this for when I'm in crowds. But uh, this is going to be a long uh, video, 13 minutes right now. Um, however, it's, uh, it's quite good. Enjoying it. Um, not gonna be my, not gonna be my regular rotation, but maybe on rainy days and stuff like this, it would be a good, it would be a good change of pace, as well as being a good crowd pleaser. Okay, that's my one puff review, everybody. Uh, have a good, um, whatever, day. Let's, let's, let's go with day. Have a good day, and uh, I will see you in the funny papers. Ta ta.